Here's a video that's going to help you go through section 4.2, not only what is in our textbook, but also some of the supplemental material that I added in for 4.2. 4.2 is really focused on summation and looking at a function given different intervals, especially tables, equations, and determining what the area under the curve was. And we had some special names for what we were talking about. We called them Riemann sums. It was named after the man who, dis who went through and, and talked about it and kind of studied it. Looking at what happens when we break a region up into rectangles angles using the left end, that's called the left end Riemann sum, the right end Riemann sum. We also had a midpoint sum, which I'll we'll cover here a little bit later in this video, and then also what's called a trapezoidal sum or a trapezoidal approximation. So first I'm going to start with this table, an extremely common question on an AP test, where you're given a table of values, you're not given the actual function itself, and asking you to find particular summations. And I'm going to go through every single one here, because you're going to see this on your quiz as well. We are breaking this up into four rectangles or four rectangles, also four trapezoids, depending on what I'm looking at. You can even think of it almost like on a number line, where your first rectangle goes from 1 to 3, your second one goes from 3 to 4, your third one goes from 4 to 6, and your last one goes from 6 to 9. So using these x values to kind of give you an idea about the, the width of each rectangle. And we are using the f of x values to determine the height of each rectangle. So we're going to have three answers for this problem. We're going to have a left end answer, we're going to have a right end answer, and we're going to have a trapezoidal answer. A lot of times we call them L, R, and T. And what you'll notice is they are uneven subintervals, so we have to look at each rectangle or each trapezoid separately. So first we're going to start with the left end. Left end means the left side of the rectangle. So if you look right here, this is telling me the left side of the first rectangle has a height of three. So it's going up three units it has a width of 2, because that is the distance between 1 and 3. So my first rectangle, and it, sometimes it helps people to draw it, you go up 3 units, over 2 units, you get an area of 6. My second rectangle, I'm going to use this side, it has a height of 4, it only has a width of 1, because it's only going from 3 to 4. So it's going up a little higher, kind of off my screen a little bit, it's tall and skinny, but it is 4 by 1, or in other words, 4. My third one is going all the way up to a height of 6, but it only has a width of 2. So it is 6 by 2, again, I kind of draw it off my scale, 6 by 2, giving me an area of 12. And then finally, my last one is going up a height of 5, has a width of 3, so it is 5 by 3. And here's where it is nice to have a calculator, not that you can't do this in your head, but it is very quick if you do have your calculator with you. You are adding all of these up. We get 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 12 is 22, plus 15 is 37. You do not need a unit. Um, you could say, if you wanted to say this is area, you could say unit squared, or you can just leave it as 37. For your right end approximation, you're doing the same thing, but now instead of starting with a height of 3, now the first rectangle, you go to the right side of it. The right side of it has a height of 4, but it's still 2 units wide. The next one, we use a height of 6, but it's still 1 unit wide. The next one, we use a height of 5, but still 2 units wide. And the last one, we are using a height of 3, and it is still 3 units wide. We're going to add these up. So I get 8 plus 6 plus 10 plus 9, which gives me 14 plus 10 is 24, 20, or 14 plus 10 is 24, 24 plus 9 is 33. Now my trapezoid, what you're doing is you're making a series of four trapezoids. Each trapezoid is one half the height times the base is added together. So I can put the one half in front of everything. My first trapezoid has a height of two. That comes from the distance between 1 and 3, and it has bases that are 3 and 4. This time you're using both sides, so you're using this number and this number, 3 and 4. My next trapezoid has a height of 1, my bases are 4 and 6. My next trapezoid has a height of 2, my bases are 6 and 5. And my last trapezoid has a height of 3, my bases are 5 and 3. You do have to do them all separately because each one has a different height, so I can't go through and follow any type of pattern like some of the ones we did in class. So this we get 2 times 7, that's 14. Again, you can do this in your calculator if you want. 1 times 10 is 10. 2 times 11 is 22. 3 times 8 is 24. Add these all up, we get 24 and 24 is 48. 48 and 22 is 70, but do not forget to take half of it, and we get 35.
Now, one thing that we talked about in class that we should remember is this is always true that if I take the left-hand Riemann sum and the right-hand Riemann sum and average the two of them, and you do it with the same, has to be the same data, you will always get the tra trapezoidal sum of that same data. So it gives you a way to check. I would expect, and so would the expectations of whoever is grading this, that you show the pieces that you are plugging in. To get this, you can't just automatically say, well, then I know it's 35. But you know as a way to check that those two, when I average left and right, I should always get the trapezoidal. A lot of times on an AP test, they won't ask you for all three. So you're not really pulling that pattern. You're more just looking at the one particular one that they're asking for. Here's another way to ask a question. This is going through and doing a tra tra trapezoidal approximation. This time, instead of a table, it's actually giving you the function. Now, this one is going to be slightly easier because we are going into even um, intervals, even heights of my trapezoids. So sometimes it helps to kind of make a little number line off the side. I'm going from 1 to 3, and I'm splitting it into four pieces. So that means I'm going from 1 to 1 and a half, 1 and a half to 2, Two to two and a half, and then two and a half to three. So this kind of makes my four trapezoids. I'll draw them like a little rectangles, even though I know they're trapezoids, just so you can kind of see the four intervals that are happening. When I do my trapezoidal rule, I can say that it's one half the height. Now the height is always a half for this one because it is you're splitting it up into something that's two units long, splitting it up into four pieces. So you can say half of a half or half a point five. And here's where you can take a little bit of a shortcut. Because when you're looking at your trapezoids, you are going to use this side once. But you're going to use this side twice, because it's going to be a, a base of the trapezoid to its left and the trapezoid to its right. Same thing with the next base and the next base. The only ones that you don't use twice are the very first and the very last. So to save myself some time, I'm going to say, all right, if I put 1 into my function, I get the square root of 1, which obviously is 1. And I'm only going to have that happen once to get one base. But when I put 1.5 in there, that's actually going to show up twice because it's going to be a base of the left trapezoid and a base of the right. Same thing with 2. When I put 2 in there, it's going to be a base twice. So to save myself some time, I'm going to double it. Same thing with 2 and a half. And then 3 is only going to be there once. At this point, it really helps to have a calculator here. So let me pull mine up so I can do some of this computation. I'm going to do the inside part first, and then I'll worry about the half and the half later. So I get the square root of 1, which is obviously 1 plus 2 times the square root of 1 and a half, plus 2 times the square root of 2, plus 2 times the square root of 2 and a half, plus the square root of 3. Get that answer. Then I'm going to multiply by a half times another half, or if just to make it faster, you can multiply by a fourth, or you could just divide by four. Lots of options here. And we get an area of, going three decimal places, 2.793. This is called the trapezoidal approximation. It is being done whenever my intervals are even intervals, so it allows me to take that shortcut that I couldn't take on the previous problem when we had a table that was uneven. Last problem in this, there's a lot of different things happening with these Riemann sums, is to look at a midpoint Riemann sum. Midpoint Riemann sum is not as common because there's only certain sets of information that can even do a midpoint sum. You actually have to have the midpoint of intervals. So this is saying, I want to take the data here. I'm going to split it up into three rectangles. And in those rectangles, I'm going to use the middle of the, red, the rectangle to determine the height. So my rectangles are going to go from 1 to 5, from 5 to 9, and from 9 to 13. Whenever you have data like this and it's telling you how much to split it into, it helps to draw a little picture. Give yourself a visual. What you'll notice about this is they tell you about the middle of each interval. The middle of this interval has a height of 5. The middle of this interval has a height of 3. The middle of this interval has a height of 4. Without that information, you couldn't do this, which is why these problems are very specific to certain sets of data. So when I'm finding the area, I look at my first rectangle has a width of 4 and a height of 5 going from 1 to 5, that's where I get the width of 4, and I'm using this number to determine the height. My second one also has a width of 4 with a height of 3, and my third one also has a width of 4 with a height of 4. Now, if you wanted to, you could just multiply by the 4 at the end and add the 5, the 3, and the 4. So I get 20 plus 12 plus 16, which is 28 and 20, 48.
and again, square units, but a lot, oftentimes you're not even asked to find units. So that goes through all, through all of the different Riemann sums, plus the trapezoidal sum, plus a trapezoidal approximation, which gives you some practice with everything.